Choosing the right web hosting provider can feel like you're walking through a minefield. One wrong step and you're stuck with slow loading speeds, limited features, or unexpected price hikes. Trust me, I've been there, and it's not fun. If you're torn between Hostinger and Bluehost, two of the most popular hosting companies out there, I'm here to help you avoid a mistake that so many people make when deciding between the two. We're going to dive deep into these two hosts, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what you're getting into and how to make the right choice based on your actual needs, not just what looks cheap up front. And spoiler alert, price isn't everything, and there's a common mistake you need to avoid. Now, before we dive into the nitty gritty details, I've got some good news for you. We have discounts available that can help you save some money. If you're leaning toward Hostinger, you can get an additional 10% off your plan by using the code SITESTARTERS at checkout. You can find all the discounts and offers through the links in the description below, so don't forget to check them out before making your decision. All right, so let's kick things off with Hostinger. If you've done even a little bit of research, you've probably seen Hostinger mentioned as one of the most affordable hosting options out there. And it's true, and it's one of their biggest selling points. You you can get started with Hostinger for as low as $2.99 per month, which sounds like a dream come true, especially if you're on a tight budget, but as with all things, there's more to the story. One of the things that makes Hostinger stand out is its incredible balance between price and performance. Even at that low price, you get fast loading times thanks to their solid server infrastructure. They're constantly investing in their servers, which means you get reliable uptime and a website that doesn't take forever to load. That's a big deal because no one's going to stick around if your website crawls along like a snail. Hostinger's interface is also very user friendly. They use their own custom control panel called the H panel, which is designed to be simple to navigate, even if you've never touched a website before, which I mean, that would be something. But this is especially great for beginners, okay, who might feel overwhelmed by the more technical aspects of web hosting. If you're looking for a hosting service that's easy to manage, affordable, and performs well, hosting or ticks all those boxes. It's perfect for bloggers, small business owners, or anyone who wants a solid hosting experience without spending too much money. But here's where the red flags start waving. While hosting or low price prices are appealing, it's important to note that they're introductory prices. While your initial term is up, the renewal rates can jump significantly. That's the catch with many hosting companies, and Hostinger is no exception. This isn't a deal breaker, but it's something to be aware of if you're in this for the long term. Also, while Hostinger's support is decent, it's not the best out there. They offer 24-7 chat support, but sometimes the response times can be slower than expected, and the quality of help you get varies. If you're someone who needs constant, consistent, and high-level support, this might be a bit frustrating. Now let's talk about Bluehost. If you've looked into starting a website, especially a WordPress site, chances are you've stumbled across Bluehost. That's because Bluehost is one of the officially recommended hosting providers by WordPress itself, and it's been a go-to for beginners and WordPress users for years. Now, Bluehost is known for its solid performance, especially when it comes to WordPress integration. Setting up a WordPress site with Bluehost is incredibly straightforward with one-click installation and easy setup wizards to guide you through the process. This makes it a great option if you're specific specifically planning to run a WordPress site. Another area where Bluehost shines is customer support. They offer 24-7 phone, chat, and email support, and they're generally quick to respond. If you're someone who likes to have that safety net of being able to pick up the phone and talk to a real person when something goes wrong, then Bluehost has you covered. Bluehost also provides a lot of storage and bandwidth even on their basic plans. So if you're running a site that requires a lot of resources like an e-commerce store or a media-heavy blog, Bluehost can handle it. Their uptime is reliable and their servers are located in data centers that deliver good performance across the board. Now, while Bluehost is great, it's not perfect. For starters, their pricing can be a bit misleading. Like Hostinger, the initial prices look good, but the renewal rates are where things get expensive. After your first term, you're looking at a significant increase in costs, which might take some by surprise if they haven't planned for it. Bluehost also tends to offer a lot of upsells, which can be a bit overwhelming for some new users. When you're checking out, you'll see a bunch of optional add-ons like SE, tools, site backups, and security features, which are great to have but can drive up the cost quickly. If you're not careful, you could end up spending way more than you intended. So now that we've looked at both hosts individually, let's get into the key differences between the two. This is where you need to be paying close attention because it's these small details that can make or break your decision. So lock in, guys. So we've barely touched on the pricing already, but this is one of the biggest factors when comparing Hostinger and Bluehost. Hostinger has the edge when it comes to introductory pricing. You just can't be $2.99 a month 
well, it could be $199, but that's not important, okay? Once that term is up, though, Hostinger's renewal rates will jump significantly, though they're still generally lower than Bluehost. Moreover, Bluehost's initial pricing is higher, but their renewal rates are also steeper. So while it might feel like you're getting a better deal with Bluehost upfront because of their expensive feature set, you'll pay for it later on. When it comes to performance, both Hostinger and Bluehost are reliable, but Hostinger tends to come out on top in terms of raw speed, especially for smaller websites. Hostinger's infrastructure and focus on fast load times make it an excellent choice if speed is a priority. However, Bluehost performance, particularly for WordPress sites, is rock solid. If you're planning on using WordPress, you'll likely get smoother performance with Bluehost because of its optimizations and tighter integration. Customer support is another big one though, and Hostinger has decent support, but their chat system, like we've discussed earlier, can be hit or miss, and sometimes you'll have to wait for help. On the other hand, Bluehost offers more comprehensive support, including phone support, which can be a lifesaver if something goes wrong and you need immediate help. If you're someone who values high quality fast support, Bluehost wins this round. Now, both platforms are relatively easy to use, but they cater to different kinds of users. Hostinger's H panel is simple and intuitive, making it great for beginners or anyone who wants a straightforward, no frills experience. Bluehost with its C panel and WordPress tools is slightly more advanced, but incredibly user friendly for WordPress users. If you're building a WordPress site, Bluehost has a clear advantage with its one click installs and built in WordPress specific tools. Now, here's the mistake I want to help you avoid. Don't get blinded by the cheapest price. I know it's tempting to go with the cheapest hosting provider you can find, especially when Hostinger is dangling that $299 offer in front of you, but hosting isn't just about the price you pay today, it's about what you get in the long term. Many people make the mistake of choosing based on introductory prices only to be hit with higher renewal costs and limited features down the line. Sure, Hostinger is cheaper up front, but if you need more robust support or plan to run a large website, you might find that you're missing out on features that Bluehost provides. This doesn't mean that Hostinger is isn't the right choice. It absolutely can be for the right kind of site, but you need to think ahead. Are you going to outgrow the basic plan quickly? Will you need more features, better support, or faster servers in the future? These are things to consider before you click that sign up button. So considering everything that we've discussed, which one should you go for? And well, here's a quick breakdown. Go with Hostinger if you're on a budget, just starting out, or running a small site that doesn't need tons of resources. Hostinger is also a great option if you're looking for simple, fast hosting without a lot of bells and whistles. Then, go with Bluehost if you're running a WordPress site, need more robust customer support, or plan to scale your site over time. Bluehost's features, especially for WordPress users, make it a great choice for more complex sites or businesses. At the end of the day, both Hostinger and Bluehost are great hosting providers, but the big mistake people make is choosing based on price alone. Don't fall into that trap. Again, instead, think about what you need now and what you'll need in the future. Hostinger is perfect for those looking for affordable and fast hosting, while Bluehost shines when it comes to WordPress integration and customer support. Board. If you guys have any further questions though, you can leave a comment down below and I will get to you when I can. Don't forget about those discounts either if you choose to go with either of these providers and consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy what we do here. At any rate though, thank you so much for watching guys and until next time, take care.